Welcome everyone to Career Happy Hour. I'm Andrew Beach, executive coach. I help professionals like you communicate your value to find great opportunities faster. That's whether you're working or not. That's through a branded networking process where I help you learn how to present yourself and network with people who have the, the pulse and the power to hire someone like you. So good to see you today. If you could, please let me know where you're joining from in the chat. That would be awesome to get a feel for where you're joining from and uh, to get a feel on how I can help you today. There's uh, lots of folks that come here. This is a community. Uh, we call it Career Happy Hour because every Friday, 3 o'clock p.m. Pacific time, I will be here sharing with you some thoughts, some ideas, best known methods, and also answering any questions you have. You can also come on live. There's a link in the description of this video. During the live session, you could click that link and I'll invite you in to our conversation and we can talk about job search, whatever it is for you. Is it um, networking, interviewing, identifying jobs, looking at target companies? What is it for you? What question do you have that you would like to have answered today? Now, you can see that there is a topic today, and I do try to share a little bit of knowledge, information on what's happening in the marketplace every week. So in the marketplace right now, um, it's interesting. There was a an emergency, at least here in Oregon. I don't know where it is in, in your neck of the woods, but here in Oregon, there was a, an announcement of an emergency stipend for people who were on unemployment uh, who weren't getting any money. <laughs> I mean, that's one of the things that's happening. Hey, Terry, good to see you. One of the things that's happening here in Oregon is that they had so many people go on unemployment that, hey, um, we're not getting, they, they just couldn't handle the capacity. It brought the system to its needs and there were people that weren't getting paid for several weeks now going on several months. And I believe today was the beginning of a limited uh, stipend. I think it was $500 or something. And Evidently, you can go to a financial institution or a credit union and wait in line, wait in line to get your $500. So uh, I don't know what it's like in your neck of the woods, but um, you, you certainly feel the tension in the air um, that a lot of people are struggling. And I want to be a solution or at least part of a solution to that problem. So what is it for you? What, what can you offer? What can you offer? your fellow man to help them out um, or woman, fellow person, uh, your neighbor, um, who, what, what can you do for them? So I, I just bring that up because I, I can feel the tension in the air. I think a lot of people are wrestling with a lot of anxiety, um, uncertainty, disconnection, isolation. There's a lot of stuff going around. So let's, let's make this though a place where people can come and freely share and seek advice and get support uh, because I don't want this to be a community where it's just me talking. I encourage you in the chat to interact with each other. This is a, co a community and I, I want you to connect and I want you to help each other and support each other. Good. Welcome back. Good to see you, Chelsea. Happy to have you here. Um, so if you're on uh, whatever platform you're on, most of the folks that I connect with are on LinkedIn. That's great because career coach, that's where a lot of people are at. That's where a lot of the professionals are hanging out. So uh, if you're on LinkedIn, uh, great, then connect with each other. Um, but I'm broadcasting also on YouTube and Periscope and Facebook inside a group that I have there uh, called Finding Jobs Without a Resume. So if that's you, um, I haven't really curated anything on that group yet. So uh, I, I haven't put an effort on it. I'll be honest. I'm not perfect. Uh, many of us aren't, but um, so anyways, let me know if you could, whether or not you can see a share button somewhere on the screen. Could you just share this with your network? I'd really appreciate it. Uh, it's going to help us get the word out about this free service every Friday, three o'clock Pacific time. People can come here. They can get the support that they need, um, and get their questions answered and, and look and, you know, gain different perspectives and meet people. I think it's all valid. Don't you? Get new perspectives, meet new people, sharpen the saw, all those things. Good. Uh, excellent. So there should be a link in the chat somewhere too if you want to come on live. But I wanted to share from you. I shared one of my books here. Uh, I think it was the networking book. We went through that and reviewed that. 
Uh, last week, I talked about what colors your parachute, which is also a very good uh, time proven book about job search. And then the other one I really enjoy is uh, 48 Days to the Work You Love. So if you haven't picked up this little guy, uh, I think it's been revised two times since I bought it. I think this is the original version back in, uh, let me see when it was published, 2007. It's, I think it's had two revisions since then, so uh, it could be updated. Hey, Bernie, good to see you. Welcome, everybody. Say hi to Bernie. Uh, connect with her. She's a wonderful, wonderful resource. Um, so I just wanted to share with you some thoughts, some ideas that I took away from this book that were really valuable. And I wanted to share it with you because they were a little bit different. And as I go through and read this, some of it may not be new, but think about how you can incorporate some of these ideas, these thoughts into your, your day to day. And this might be something that you take as an opportunity to see, Hey, you know what? Maybe I could execute something similar to this on LinkedIn because when this was published, originally speaking, uh, people were still sending mail to an address. So good. Good to see you, Joe. Uh, welcome. I say hi to everybody. Connect with each other. Anybody you see in the chat is fair game. I encourage you to connect. Say, hey, we're on a career happy hour together uh, with Andrew, and I would like to connect with you and have a conversation offline. So don't just connect on LinkedIn. Please have a conversation. Talk on the phone. Schedule a Zoom meeting or a Skype or a uh, FaceTime, whatever it takes. Okay. But I wanted to share from you from chapter, let me see what chapter this is. Because here's the thing. Uh, when I read 48 Days to the Work You Love, I thought that the best part about it was actually the first part, which is self-discovery. And I think every search process, if you're between things or you're looking to elevate your standing in your organization, should start with self-reflection, internal. Okay. And that's perfectly valid. I think he's got it down. Dan Miller, writer, author of this book, 48 Days to the Work You Love, really has dialed in, follow what your, your heart tells you. So the, the internal reflection is excellent in this book. But I wanted to pull out today something I think from, looks like it's chapter six on how to find the jobs. Okay, so I think all of us are coming here because we want to know, hey, what are the best, uh, maybe it's chapter seven. Let me see here. Yeah, it's chap chapter seven. Chapter seven, finding your unique path. And so I wanted to share some thoughts with you if it's okay. And, and we can discuss this and you can ask following questions, but it's called, it's the job search process. So he does the internal reflection, very similar actually to uh, Bowles and the, um, the what colors your parachute. Uh, he comes from a biblical per perspective. And although Bowles was a, um, I think an Episcopal minister um, before he lost his job and then started that book, it's very similar career path to Dan Miller. But um, this is the job search process, a little bit different. So I want to get your feedback on this, on whether or not you've you tried this or if this has worked for you, because it's a little more direct. Uh, and we know from marketing that direct mail, um, cold outreach like that, it's like a 1% return on investment. And he's claiming that people get better results through, through his method than others. So we'll see if this is true. And maybe you could implement this on LinkedIn versus through the mail because people aren't picking up their mail at, at their companies anymore. So, or through an email campaign. So here it is, the job search process. And by the way, if you have any questions, go ahead and put those in the chat. Happy to, to answer. Share this with your network. Uh, I think it's a valuable tool. Every Friday I'm here ready to answer your questions. So here it is, job search process. This phase of the process is intensive, but short and focused. If you are investing 35 hours a week and don't think that you can't complete this process while you are working, you can. Most people in a job search today are employed. Everything but the interviews themselves can be done without interfering with a normal workday. You simply need to see it as a short burst of intensive energy to lead you to the future you want. Getting prepared. Here we go. Identifying 30 to 40 target companies. Do you want a place with 20 to 85 employees, a profit or nonprofit organization, a manufacturing or service company, a new company or an established one? Do you want to travel or be home every evening? Would you prefer an organization in health, retail, finances, entertaining, or printing? Use the business directory for your city, the chamber of commerce directory, an industrial guide um, readily available at your local library for media, manufacturing, nonprofits, etc., to help you create this target list. Uh, I'll take a pause there. You could also use LinkedIn. 
LinkedIn is an exceptional resource. Okay, most libraries will have both local and national search um, tools for selecting companies based on your criteria. You could also use something called Reference USA uh, to get some of those. Reference USA, at least in Oregon, is free resource through the local library. You just need a library card, and it's free. Okay. You are in the driver's seat. This is where I think it's really important to remember you're in control. You can choose the companies. We aren't waiting for jobs to be posted, right? So he's saying proactively find 30 to 40 target companies. Choose the companies you would like to work with. You don't have to wait until they advertise a position or you hear someone say they are hiring. The, those usual methods typically put you up against 70 to 80 people I'm guessing it's 10x that in today's market for most any desirable position, whereas in this method, you may have two to three competitors. Remember, when you see an ad for a particular position, you have already lost your best opportunity for that position. And that is true. Also, this is a, a, the method for finding the 87% 80 of jobs that are never advertised. Uh, and I think that's valid, but there's still uh, compliance issues there. So I think 87% are never advertised, but you're there early, which means they do advertise them, but you're already in the driver's seat. In a rapidly changing workplace, everyone is looking for good people. Isn't that the truth? In a I'll say it again. In a rapidly changing workplace, do we have that today? Absolutely. Everyone is looking for good people. Everyone is looking for good people. I think what that means is everyone is hiring. Everyone is hiring. Be proactive in your search. Yes, sir. Use these three critical steps for your job search. Here's where it gets really interesting, okay? Here's where it gets interesting. Number one, send a letter of introduction. Isn't that a connection request on LinkedIn? It could be extrapolated, right? Send a letter of introduction to each company. Send no more than 15 at a time so you can do the appropriate follow-up. Actually, I think uh, uh, Terry and I talked about this last week, how he's doing a similar thing, but he's reconnecting with his network. Uh, the letter of introduction is only to build name recognition. Remember. This is a selling process. Job search is selling marketing and sales, okay? And we are borrowing here from a sales technique. Let's say a, a company is selling water treatment systems. If they can get me to see and hear about their product at least three times, my likelihood of buying goes up exponentially. With the introduction letter, we are beginning the same process. You want a potential target company to see or hear about you at least three times. So the introduction letter is the first of at least three contacts in this process. That could be LinkedIn connection request, email, um, text message if they have a cell phone number. I wouldn't suggest a text message unless you get permission, but it is something to think about, okay? Number two. So that's number one. Identify 40, 30 to 40 companies, uh, 15 people at a time. You can find those 15 people and their names on LinkedIn and send them correspondence. Uh, if you want to, we can talk through the letter of introduction in a minute because uh, he has an example in the back of the book. Number two, number two, send your cover letter and resume a week after your introduction letter. Address the cover letter to a specific person, specific person that you've identified likely on LinkedIn. Okay. You can get this name from the business directory or call the company. Interesting. Business directory would be LinkedIn. Okay, it says here, receptionists are wonderful about giving useful information if, if you ask nicely. Don't bother sending it to the personnel department, human resources, or to whom it may concern. Target a person who has the ability to make a hiring decision. Good advice. Good advice. Target a person who has the ability to make a hiring decision. That will normally be the sales manager, the VP of operations, the president, the office manager, et cetera. In fact, let me know in the chat, what is the um, what is the title of the person that would hire you? What is their title? Put that in the chat. Good. Okay. All right, Amitha, I will get there in a second. Uh, we can read through kind of the highlights of, of what goes in that letter of introduction. Okay. So online search sites like Hoover's, uh, Webopedia can give a lot of pertinent information about most companies. There's the internet. There's Google. I mean, we have no no lack of information on companies. I think we have, what we have is lack is information overload, and then we get overloaded and we do nothing. So uh, let, let's keep keep all those things in mind. So that's step two: send cover letter, resume one week later. Three: call the follow up. This step is very important, very important, but only about one to two percent of job hunters do this. Okay, 
guess what? If you do it, you're in the top 2%. It is very easy to bring your name to the top of the list if you just do a follow-up call. Follow-up call. Where would I get their number? Often, if you look at LinkedIn and there, there's a contact info button on every profile, you might be able to find a, um, uh, uh, an email and a cell number. Don't be afraid of being persistent. Call four to five days after sending your resume. Yes. I know that the challenges of screeners and voicemail, but if the process were easy, everyone would do it. Isn't that the truth? If any process were easy, everybody would do it. So what process is easy that everybody is doing right now? Making applications, right? If you want to stand out, don't leave messages on voicemail other than to just build it one more opportunity for repetitive name recognition. Don't say anything in this phone message about the person calling you. Don't expect it. And don't even set the stage for it. If you get a voicemail, just hang up and call the receptionist again. No voicemails, okay? In fact, the best advice I got is don't ever leave voicemails for people you don't know. If you don't know these people, don't leave a voicemail. Now, if they've called you and asked for a return call, that's different, okay? But if I'm reaching out to them and they did not reach out to me, I'm not leaving a voicemail. I must have missed Bill. When do you expect him in today? What time does he normally get into the office in the morning? Gather any information you can. Then when you do connect in a phone call, say, hi, this is Bill Smith. I'm following up on a recent letter and resume. I know what your company does, and I really think I could add to your success. When can we get together and talk? You'll be surprised how frequently people will say, why don't you come by tomorrow at 2 o'clock? Well, it's Saturday. It's Saturday. Would you go to, to a, an interview on Saturday at 2 o'clock? Absolutely. <laughs> Keep in mind that if you just send cover letters and resumes, you need to send out 254 to have a statistical chance of getting in a job offer, okay? I, I think it's much higher than that today. If you combine that with a phone call, the number drops one out of 15, a dramatic difference. Add to that an introduction letter and the results will amaze you. This is a selling process. And, and you know, so this direct process does work uh, however, if there is if it's predicated on a job opportunity, it, it's short circuited. That they'll they'll send you to to talent acquisition very quickly, and you're not offering them something that they don't already have. Does that make sense? So let's offer them something they don't already have. We use a three time repetitive process as a marketing principle. Just commit to the process and a timeline. This process is followed precisely. Does get results. Here we go. A gentleman who sent out more than a thousand, a thousand resumes over a 14 month period with no job offers was able to get five interviews and three offers in a 45 day period using this method. Another guy who had gone six months with no interviews received four offers in 10 days with this system. A recent college graduate, recent college grad with no real work experience received six job offers in a 10 day period using this process. Remember, no one is going to come looking for you. No truer words could be told. If you took one thing away from today's session, remember, no one is going to come looking for you. You must do an active, aggressive search. I believe an active, aggressive is a little much. That's just me, okay? It's not uncommon for very competent professionals to resist the aggressive nature of an effective job search. They tend to assume that their credentials and great work history will speak for itself and that pushing for contacts and interviews is somehow less than professional. Anybody feel that way? I know I have. Unfortunately, we are in a marketing environment. It is no longer true that if you build a better mousetrap, people will beat a path to your door. A clear plan of selling is required to find success in any arena. Finding a gr great job is no exception. Important note. Again, don't think that I am ignoring the possibilities with the internet. Yes, I know you can get the emails of 10,000 human resource directors and have your wonderful resume in their inbox this afternoon. However, however, I also know that 9,999 of them will resent, resent your intrusion. And we know now that 75% of the companies that have hired from the internet have had a bad, bad experience. A professional printed copy of your resume is a, in a real envelope is still the most respected method of first contact. That's old school. That's old school. Not that it isn't valid and not that it wouldn't work. I just think in the given given circumstance of today, people aren't in the office. They're not getting mail. 
you'd have to have a home address. And now I'm getting a little creepy, right? Not only that, I'm sending mail to a person. If I lick that envelope, are they going to get COVID-19? Uh, yeah, that I don't think that would go over well today. However, I think there is something to be said in executing a similar process here on LinkedIn. And I'd love to have somebody try it and let me know how it works. Uh, an irony in low unemployment times is that you may tend to think of it it, that if a company advertises a position, you are probably the only person who responded. <laughs> and they will call on Monday and ask you to start work on Tuesday. That is absolutely false. Although it's a lot closer to truth than if it's the other way around. Just, just, just saying. Even if low unemployment, uh, they will receive 70 to 80 responses. It's 10x that today. Probably seven to 800 responses. That tells us that although most people are working, there are still many of those same people who are in the job market. They know there are many new opportunities, so they are looking as well. So there you go. That's it. That's the method. What do you think? Give me some comments, some questions. Okay. Uh, sample letter of introduction. Thank you, Amitha. I will do that now. If you have questions, go ahead and put those in the chat. If you want to come on live, hey, there's a link in the description. Make it. Yeah. Cleon Cox in the house. My goodness, if you all have never met Cleon Cox and had a conversation with him, you are missing out. He is an exceptional, exceptional man. And I believe each one of you should have a conversation with Cleon. I don't mean to overwhelm you, Cleon. I know you're a busy guy, but you know, it's COVID-19. I'm not even sure. Does, is your networking group on Fridays at the Capitol Hill Library, is that still meeting? Some of you are in Seattle and other places uh, uh, transient from, from Portland, but it's okay. It's okay. Oregon's a great place, but, you know, great place to visit. We don't encourage people to come. It's okay. Anyway, so if you haven't yet met Cleon, I would click on his, um, his profile in the chat and send him a connect request and ask for a conversation. Good. So that's it. 48 days to the work you love. There are people who have not met Cleon yet. <laughs> no kidding. That is so true, Ted. I can appreciate that. If uh, And that, you know, his name precedes him. So uh, let me get to page 209 here. Okay. So let's talk about the sample introduction letter that, um, let's see, Amitha, please share a sample introduction letter. Now, because this is copyright information, I'm not going to show it up to the camera but I will give you an idea of what's on it. So it starts off with an address and then a salutation, dear so-and-so. And so here it is. Uh, after more than 14 years as a sales professional in the medical industry, uh, I am exploring new opportunities where my sales abilities will continue to be used. Positions commensurate with my past experience and career goals would be manager of training and staff development, manager of human resource development, Director of Sales and Marketing. My record is one of solid accomplishments and increasing levels of responsibility. The training programs I have developed have been adopted as a model for our company's 23 nationwide locations. My sales goals have been exceeded by an average of 34% the last five years. I will forward my resume to you in the next few days to allow you to explore how my qualifications may match growth opportunities in your company. Sincerely, Jason Smith. Okay. Uh, let's see. Notice, uh, so here's here's his uh, footnote here. Uh, let's see. Notice, this requires nothing of the recipient. It simply tells him or her what is going to happen next. And it plants the seed so your name begins to become familiar. We are in a culture where repetition sells. In this process, you want three exposures. So that just reiterates. There you go. There's, there's the uh, sample letter. Okay. Good. Yeah, libraries are closed, Cleon. I think that's chapter seven in the book, uh, but I could be wrong. It's been redone. Uh, chapter seven, finding your unique path. And so this, again, I think is one of the first editions. It doesn't have the little thing on the side that says a revised. Uh, it does say published in 2007, but I don't think it was actually written then. So who knows? Okay. So that that's what I got. 48 Days to the Work You Love by Dan Miller. It's on my uh, highly recommended list. Not only helps you build your brand by doing self-reflection, but also gives you some ideas on how to do things. But um, good. Thank you for that question. Let's see. Is there any other questions out there? Someone want to come on live? Yeah, I'd love to talk to Cleon. Maybe we could get him on. 
Burning from Los Angeles. Good to have you. Hopefully you're still here. So CEO, CF. Yeah, so um, good call. So Terry is right, right? When I asked who is your hiring manager, it, it, you know, it's clear that you need to have conversations at that level if you want to gain traction. So if you were to execute this plan, right, it would be identifying your target companies, finding people with that title, sending the letter of introduction. Uh, maybe they look at your LinkedIn profile. If that's the case, then, you know, maybe you look at your uh, profile views and you execute the, the thing quicker with that person that looked at your profile. So anyhow, if you want to come on live, you can absolutely do that. Happy to uh, hiring decision. Director of organization. Yeah. Thank you, Karar. Good. Couple of people who are not me. Yeah. Anyway, good. So uh, along those lines, I'm hoping everybody in the chat is taking advantage. So I will put, um, I don't know if Cleon sees it, but in the description, uh, wherever you're joining, most most everybody here is on LinkedIn. But um, if you're joining, there is a link in the description that will allow you to come on here live and you and I can have a conversation, whatever that looks like. So if you're up for that, let's do it. Let's do it. Live hands-on coaching is available to you right now, where we stand today. Uh, I'll put the link in the chat once more so that you can have it. So if you want to come on live, you can. It is in the description. It looks like you have to, oh, that's interesting. So yeah, you do have to click see more in the description. So I just looked at the description. You have to click the see more button. Okay. I also put it in the chat. I'll stick it in here on, um, let's see, on, uh, I'm also on YouTube and Periscope and Facebook. So there we go. Good to go. Any other questions out there? Anybody challenged, have something to think about? I know, hey folks, people are hiring. I've worked with, um, I think just in the last two weeks, I've worked with at least three or four candidates that are interviewing right now. And we're not talking entry-level positions, okay? So companies are hiring. Uh, they're just hiring uh, and interviewing remotely. And then they're onboarding remotely. So it's likely you're gonna get something sent to you <laughs> sent to you um, in the mail, right? So you'll get, you'll do your interview. Uh, you'll take um, some sort of test or something, background check, et cetera. And then you will head off to um, to get your assets, right? They'll, they'll mail you your computer and, and then we'll go from there. Good. And you may never meet those people, okay? Looks like there's somebody here in the chat I don't know. Is that, it kind of looked like Bernie. Was that Bernie? If you want to come on live, go ahead and activate your web camera or not. Uh, if you want me to um, admit you. Uh, good question. Here we go. Here's a question by Chelsea. Thank you, Chelsea. Always coming with the great questions. Question. I was told to get certification in certain things that I was going to get within the next month anyway as a way to stand out, but several people already have those certs. So even when I have it, it won't stand out. People are trying to do you a favor, Chelsea. They're trying to give you advice, information. They're trying to help you. Okay. And that's valid. The challenge is how are they going to help you that's productive for your search? And typically, typically what people are doing is they're, they're offering this advice because that's that that's what they know to give. Okay. That's what they know to give. That's no. That's what they know how to contribute back to you, to allow them to help you, and that and that's good, right? Get them in the habit of helping you. So that's okay. So the idea there is great. If I get that certification, if I get this thing, add that to my resume, etc. What position are you considering me for? Well, I was just saying, you know, most of our people have that. I'm just being nice. It was just some some sage advice. It wasn't something that's going to connect you to an interview. Great. Who else should I talk to? in this space um, that might actually have opportunities for me. So you go the step further and ask for a connection to a person in that company or another company, okay? And so sometimes when we get into conversations about employment, people get uncomfortable because they, they want to help you. They just think the best way to help you is their best way. And it may not be your best way. So there you go. Uh, let's see. 
So since several of us have the same background and same job, what are some ways we can stand out? You can reach out to people and have conversations. So here's the challenge, right? If I'm if I'm uh, applying to jobs, crossing my fingers and trying to stand out based on my written documents, I'm at a disadvantage, okay? So I would actually encourage you to identify target companies much like we talked about today. See who you know there. See who you know that knows somebody there and execute a process cold if you don't based on what we just talked about. Reach out to a person who could be your future boss, etc. okay? Good. Chelsea, coming with a second question. Look at you go. So are you noticing a lot more remote work? I'm assuming today that 99%, well, let me take that back. 95% of the opportunities today are remote work. Why? Because nobody's going to an office right now. There's companies that are uh, making their real estate available for sublease or selling their re retail or selling their commercial properties. Okay. They're going hundred percent remote. Um, th that's the trend right now. And it probably for the near term, 12 to 18 months, every position is remote. Every position. That means when you're looking for searches, if you're doing searches for job postings, don't filter it by geography. Just look for jobs that look interesting. Doesn't matter where they are. And you can cross the bridge of going there, going there when it makes sense. Look at this. All right. We have Cleon in the house. Let me get my headphones on, Cleon. Bear with me here a second. Maybe Cleon could add, add some ice here. Every position is remote. Oh. Every uh, one thing we have to do, Cleon, just so you know, is we have to turn off our, um, <laughs> we have to turn off our microphone or speakers for LinkedIn. If we have that LinkedIn window open, close that window. Uh, if you're in the restream, uh, and then I'll, I'll bring you on. Let's try this again. Cleon, are you there? Uh, I'm here. But there's, I've got something else. Uh, one thing we have to do, Cleon, just. Yeah. yeah. So Cleon, go, go ahead and close the tab that you have that has LinkedIn on it. Just close it. You can open it back up later. That'd be the easiest thing to do. So you guys are going to have a treat today. We're going to talk to Cleon. This is exciting. So if you have questions for Cleon, put them in the chat. Um, let me see here. I'm coming to you, Cleon. Don't worry. Uh, what are some other new ways we can stand out? The new ways are the old ways. Trust. How do we build trust? Maybe we'll talk to Cleon about that. But the way you stand out is by being a trusted resource to a hiring team and demonstrating to them in your conversations how you can solve their problem. So that predicates you need to know how to solve their problem. So let's try, let's try Cleon again here. I'm coming to you, Cleon, don't worry. Uh, what are some other new ways we can stand out? <laughs> oh, Cleon, you still have your, your audio turned on there, okay? Uh, so Cleon, if you could close your window that has LinkedIn on it. If you have a window open and it has, it, you know, when you click the link, it probably went to a new window and you have your old window for LinkedIn open. So we need to, we need to close that. And as soon as we do, we'll, we'll come back to you. Uh, so what, what questions do you have for Cleon? Go ahead and put those in the chat. I'd be happy to answer. And, and Cleon would be happy to answer and, and help you out that way. So let's see. Cleon, please turn off your LinkedIn or close the window. <laughs> uh, good. Excellent. Okay. Okay. Let's try this one more time. I'm back to you. Uh, so what questions do you have for Cleon? Go ahead and put those in the chat. Yeah. Uh, I think we're going to have to uh, let Cleon, I don't know what's happening on his side, but um, he needs to mute his, his thing there. Okay. So let's go back to the chat here. I see some additional questions from Chelsea. Thank you, Chelsea. Uh, since I've been in marketing mostly, I was thinking of making a digital infographic resume and placing it on my LinkedIn and using it when I send out my written resume. This way I have both written and visual resumes that shows my skills. Think this would work? Thoughts? Um, I think one of the things that was mentioned in our book here today was don't expect people to come find you, right? People aren't coming out to find you. Um, what I would suggest is that if you have two or three target companies that you'd love to work for, put those in the chat. There's uh, there what there's a dozen people on today's session or more, and it's going to be rebroadcast 
here um, on YouTube, as long as YouTube is around, it'll be up there. So you'll have a chance to identify um, identify those companies and get people to help you get into those companies. Whether Now, let me be clear on that. If there's a posted position open there, then it's reactive. Uh, we want to know which companies do you want to work for and why. Not because there's an open position, but because you have some connection to that company that's really exciting and valuable for you. So that would be my advice. So if you want a follow-up question on that, great. So let's see if Cleon's prepared. Cleon, are we good to go? Am I back? Yes, you're back. Okay. And there's no echo. Well, I see what you mean. Now, I wasn't sure which tab to close. <laughs> so. Close them all. <laughs> well, How are I, you, sir? I'm well. Good. You Pretty have a nice well. you have a nice COVID beard going. I yes, that's one too, what so. it is. <laughs> You are uh, something I go back to on the, the letter of introduction or the cover letter. Um, many years ago, a company I worked for sent me to business letter writing school or class. And one of the pieces that they, uh, that he stressed to us, which was very interesting, was that the letter would be structured as to the start is you, we, I. And so many times when I read people's um, cover letter is I can do this and I've done this and I know how to do this and and I never I would have never realized it till we were talking about it but he says when you start off to you have a wonderful company you have blah 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 they pay more attention uh, because rather than it's all about you it's about them so therefore you address that and then you get to the center portion it's like we would be a good team because with my knowledge of this and your production blah 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 I look forward to meeting you so keep the eyes as few as possible. And it, sometimes you think like, well, that's so silly. But after, well, I've been doing this support group for 28 years. And I learned that way before that. It really came into fruition as I was doing the group. Yeah. Well, and, yeah, and you get feedback and see if it works for people, right? Did you, right. Did you notice as people were using that advice that they got results? Yeah. You don't have to have a whole lot in the letter. They, what they're trying to do is explain their resume. Mm-hmm. Don't need what you want is their attention that they want to talk to you. Yes, sir. Excellent. Well, so um, the support group, tell us about that, Cleon. Are you guys meeting? Are you doing it remotely? How's that? How's that going for you? I'm not meeting. I'm not like you, a nice guy. I just decided after 28 years, uh, okay, it's closed. I've already, I'm becoming zoomed out because I've got uh, three Toastmaster clubs. Plus, I now visit clubs all over the world. Mm. That's kind of interesting. That's a whole new dynamic. And therefore, I said, okay, I'm just going to take a break. I still talk to some people once in a while. I don't advertise anything, but I just chit-chat with them. And people will say, can we talk? And I said, sure, of course we can. So sometimes it's on Zoom. Sometimes it's on the telephone. I can do either of those. Yeah, I, and I, I, I've always seen your group, but I never am able to make it, usually because I'm either walking or doing something else. And so that's today, I happened to sit yeah. down. I was cleaning up, and I'm like, hey. There's Andrew. And it's, <laughs> it's not 3.30 or 4 yet. Let's go over there. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Well, you know, I appreciate that, Cleon. It's, uh, you know, it's interesting. A lot of people are going through Zoom fatigue. Uh, right. and, and and they thought, okay, uh, we have Zoom, right? It was like they were excited because they had Zoom. Mm -hmm. And now when this first happened, and now we've done so much Zooming that people are like, I'm done. I, I've had enough of the Zooms, right? That's right. And now I want to get back to meeting people and, and, and shaking hands and all those things. And hopefully that's coming soon. But um, uh, one thing I do advocate for a lot of people, Cleon, uh, because of your influence, of course, is to consider joining a Toastmasters club. And so some people will come to me and say, oh, well, I don't know which club to join and how do I do that and how does it work? So maybe you could just give us a, a, a couple of minutes here today and, and just share with everybody how you might suggest they go about finding and joining and visiting Toastmasters clubs, given the current situation. Thank you very much. There are hundreds, if not thousands of clubs that are today using Zoom. And therefore, you can visit locally or far away. It's up to you. My suggestion at this point, though, would be to go to the local clubs. How do you do that? You just go to the website. Toastmasters, that's plural, dot org. And up there, there's a button that says find club. Click on the button, put in your zip code, and it will show you where the clubs are. It'll start with the closest and work away from you. Many of them will put their Zoom address on it. 
because so far Toastmasters has said uh, no meetings in person. There's no that that's their official. Okay. And you can go in there. Some of them ask you, please check in with us first, so we know you're coming, uh, because they don't want to have the what do they call it um, porn uh, porn bombing. Mm. Once in a while, different places. I've actually seen that. It's horrible. But um, so they'll ask you to let them know you're coming. Otherwise, um, maybe check and see if you know somebody there. And then you could, and they'll tell you, oh, no, come here, go there. Some of the clubs, like the ones I go to are here, there's two of them. We don't have a password. It was set up prior to the passwords so that you don't need a password. Other ones, you do need one. And many of them have a complete URL so that if you don't even have Zoom, when you click on it, it will first say, let us download this little patch. They put it on. It doesn't harm anything. And then it will take you right to the meeting. Nice. Okay. And it, uh, so you can find clubs all over. And uh, I would go to the local ones because if you decide to join, I mean, you can join online. We've gotten several new members online. Wow. They've never been to one in person. So uh, that said, Cleon, uh, you know, based on that, what – um. If I go and visit several different clubs, which how do I know which one's the right one for me? It's it's like anything else. We all do the same thing, but it's it's the uh, the atmosphere you feel. And so, of course, it's they're all still new to it, so there's a little bit of difference. But you get a kind of general a general feel. The other thing to remember is you can visit all you want for free. You don't have to join. Now you may not get to participate much uh, when you join a meeting. Generally, it's like Hi, Andrew. Uh, tell us your name and why you're here today. And you get, uh, say, a minute to s tell us why you're here. And you can say, well, I'm, I've heard about it. I want to see what it is. I'm looking for work. Somebody suggested. Whatever. And at the end of the meeting, it's like, uh, what did you think of the meeting today? So there's not much asked of you. Mm. And there's three parts to a meeting. There's the prepared speaker. There's the evaluators. And then there's the thing called table topics, which is impromptu speaking. And what else is an interview? But impromptu yeah, absolutely. See, Andrew, tell us a time when this happened. So, and you have to think of it on the mark. So sometimes if it's a smaller club, they will invite the guests. Say, would you like to try it? And sometimes people panic and they're like, I'm not ready. That's yeah. fine. You won't be ridiculed. You will not be pushed down or anything. But on the other hand, I suggest... If I was sitting next to you, I'd say, hey, they're here to help. Give it a try. Good point. Good point. So what you're Very saying is, is this is a good resource for job seekers to do well at an interview. Um, so for those who may not know what Toastmasters is, Cleon, what would your 30-second spiel be for, for Toastmasters? What is it, it and, and what is it all about? It's all about communication and leadership uh, of you. And you do it at your own pace. Toastmasters has been around 95 years, so this is not a startup. It's been around for a long time. Uh, they have now upgraded the education curriculum to where today, uh, effective this year, July 1, they have the new process is called Pathways, and all of your paths, there's 11 paths that you can take, and they will take you a while to get through them for accreditation, but you will go through that. Um, and when you get two of them completed, you could become a distinguished Toastmaster with a few other jobs to do. But you will find that you learn how to communicate with people. The biggest single, um, what is it, what I want to say, the biggest single skill that you will grow and learn and do better with is listening. You go like, yeah, but I thought this was about speaking. It is. But when you're in an interview, when you're selling, you have to listen. And if you don't listen, you'll miss the sale. Mm. You have to find out what it is that they really want. You know what you want to sell them, which is you. But the thing is, is do they really want you? Sometimes they actually do want you, but they use different words than you, and you're not sure you fit, or you use a word, and they're going like, I don't know if that's me. That's why you want to get to know the person you're talking with. Even on an informational interview, just to have, you want to get to know people, have conversation. And so you'll get that. You will raise Wherever you are with your confidence, it will raise. I, I know that. I've watched it. Mm -hmm. I've been doing that for 26 years. Yeah, I mean, that, that really kind of sparks a, a thought here, Cleon, and that is uh, this all sounds good in theory, right? Ooh. And I know there's applied right. learning and so forth. Is, is there somebody you can think of that leveraged uh, Toastmasters really well in a job search 
and it really helped them in a lot of different ways uh, comprehensively. Um, sure. You know, that sort of well, thing. Right here locally. Right here locally. Okay. Yeah. So do you have an example where that happened or yep. someone that you can share? Go. His initial idea was not for getting the job. He actually had a job and he was working for a fella. And the fella says, if you don't learn how to speak better than you're currently communicate, you have to communicate better. You're never going to make it, kid. And he goes like, you know, he's in his 20s. What? And he says, look in the Toastmasters. So he did. He, he, he joined. He became involved. He got into leadership in that he was a, a club officer. He then later on became a district officer. Today, he is a past international president of Toastmasters International. He's only 50 years old, and he did it 10 years ago. He's the youngest ever president. And today, he runs Clackamas County. He is the administrative director. He runs the whole county. Fire, roads, police, all of that is under his. Now, that's an extreme case. Right. Well, so I, what, what would he say his credit was to Toastmasters that, that, that he developed there? Confidence, the ability to listen intently, to utilize what they're telling him, and then do what he has to to make that work. And it really plays today as the director of a over $1.2 billion budget, annual budget. He's in charge. And he has to get things done. And I talk with him. I, I've given him a break. But I talked with him not too long ago, about four or five weeks ago. And I says, I know you're swamped, but I've got a question. He says, okay, what do you want? And then I went on to ask him a couple of questions. I says, I'll bet when you got this job, you never envisioned COVID because, oh, boy, <laughs> you can't believe what it's like to be under the gun to run that whole county. Wow. So there's there's lesser cases, meaning they're not that much of a, a, a springboard. But I've had hundreds of thousands of people who've come to the group. And periodically, people will join Toastmasters, and they find themselves. You mentioned earlier something, and I thought that was so uh, into it, too, and that was getting to know yourself. And over the years that I've suggested to people, every once in a while, I've had somebody come to the support group who, in my opinion, were out of touch with themselves. They had all the, the mechanical steps of how do I go get the job? Who, how do I interview? Uh, one guy wanted to memorize all the questions so he could memorize all the answers. <laughs> I said, I'd never do that. I says, you have them. They're in your head. Can you get them when you want to? And that's where the self-confidence comes into play. And the quick story on that is how many times has somebody, whether it's your spouse, your significant other, your boss, the, the pastor of the church somewhere stops you and says, Andrew, could you, we're having a meeting in here. Would you come in here and give us a five-minute report on that project you're working on? And you're thinking like, oh, what? I haven't had any time to put it together. Just come in and tell us, Andrew. And you go in, you tell them the answer, and they say, thanks a million. Go on back to what you were doing. As you walk out the door, you say to yourself, I know what I should have told them. That means you had it all the time. <laughs> you just couldn't get it when you wanted it. That's a benefit that you get from raising your confidence level higher and being able to think on the spot and pull it out of your brain, not BS, you'll come out with what you've got. Right. Well, so you were mentioning something about finding yourself or discovering yourself. Yeah. Um, you think Toastmasters is, is good at doing that in helping you articulate um, what's inside out, out to the world kind of thing? Will it draw some of that out of, of you? Maybe with, uh, I remember giving an icebreaker speech once. <laughs> yes. So uh, I don't know if that's, you know, that's a good example, but, um, you know, how do you think Toastmasters would help you with the self-discovery process? Because you, you actually learn about yourself more and, and whatever that might be, whether it's how to get the job or how to interview for the job. All these pieces have come into play now. And there was this one fella that came to the group a little over 10 years, say 11 years ago, he came to my support group and he was there and he would say, Cleon, I went out and I called these people, but nobody would talk to me. And then the next week he'd come back, I'd give him some more ideas. 
And he said, well, I did this. I said this, 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 and it didn't work because he was mechanical. It wasn't his passion. So I, I happen to notice, I don't, I notice a lot of things, but this guy, you could just see, he didn't show off or anything, but uh, he, he looks much better physically than I do. <laughs> so I asked him, I said, um, do you work out? And he goes, oh, yeah. Well, as it turns out, I mean, he knows what he has to do, what repetitions he has to do to get his body in the shape he wants it. Mm -hmm. And he got passionate when he told me that. And I says, that's what you've got to have in the interview or just talking with people. You want They want to know how passionate you get. They don't tell you that because they don't even think about it. But when somebody gets into it, if somebody gets into the house that they're going to buy and you're telling them, oh, my goodness, and these people love this and your passion shows through, now I'm warm up. I want to hear more about it. The same thing goes with you. When your passion comes through as to why you like to be a coach, you know, it's interesting for me to, just now to watch you, and I've seen you on this before. I've certainly seen you for years in person. Mm -hmm. You have more passion of what you're doing today than I've ever seen. I haven't seen you on here for a couple of months, and it's growing still. And that's what makes you a saleable person, why people want to come and listen to you and watch you. You've got a passion that helps them. You will build that. So you must, uh, you said something, maybe you, you've been a Toastmaster a little bit, but you continually be active and talking. You're doing your coaching. You're, do, you're doing that for, I believe you're still doing it for H, LHH. Yes. Yeah. So you're doing it there. You're, are you still doing your group at the uh, Washington Square? Yep, we're still doing the Breakfast Club, and right. you know I certainly have my my private uh, client list. So right. th that that's so that allows important. you to continue to practice. That's why Toastmasters meet every week because a person will, normally will not make fifty two meetings a year. So you just always have it going so that the people know when it is all the time. Here was where we meet. But yes, you will develop people in ways they don't know. The secondary piece that they right. get, nobody ever gets this is all the stuff that you learn from other people's speeches. We had a young fella in our group today who's never been to a live meeting, meeting in person altogether. He joined since he came on here. This guy is loading us with information about Zoom. He's some sort of a marketing guy. He's a whiz kid. Uh, he's, he's intelligent. He was throwing out authors' names that go back to the Greek gods. It was so interesting. And he's telling us about these different pieces and then how that will fit into your Zoom. So I'm thinking like, wow, I come here and I pay a small annual fee and this I'm getting information like this that far exceeds because personally, I don't like to pick up a big book to read on Zoom. Tell me a few of the tricks, will you, Andrew, and then I'll move forward yeah. and learn. <laughs> yeah. Give me the Cliff Notes version. There you yeah. go. Very good. Well, it looks like there's some questions here. Uh, maybe we can answer these together. Um, let's see. Uh, the question that Chelsea has, how much should we know about a company that we wish to work for before even getting selected for an interview? you have any thoughts there, Cleon? I think you need at least basic. You can One of the things you can go, you can look at the company on LinkedIn if it's traded and so on. You can look them up. And then you can, sometimes it'll show you jobs. It'll show you people. So click on the people on any of those that you know. And that's the first place. See, if you know somebody, reach back out to them. If you're connected to them, reach out to them and say, hey, I was looking at such and such company. Could we talk? Even if they don't work there, because it may be a horror story, it may be a good story. So you just listen. Thank you very much. You'll ask them questions and listen to what they have to tell you make some notes, and then find some more people if you can. Talk to people. That's where it all comes from is, is people. People have more information than you can absorb. So well, it, it's cer certainly more than you can find on the internet. Oh, and uh, so and that's where it really comes in good. But the thing is, is yes, uh, you should know as much as you can, but sometimes it's not that easy. There's companies out there, you can't find a phone number for them, nothing. They're good at hiding it. The big ones are really like that. You, you cannot get inside. Yeah, it's hard to, but that's the beauty of LinkedIn, and, yeah. and I'm appreciating it more and more. Right, that you know, it's such a great database for connecting with people. 
Um, and I'm just so glad that we still have it. And, and there's still, uh, you know, they still have a lot of the data open for us to see. Right. Um, that they're not continually putting things behind the paywall. So that that's super valuable. Um, and, and, and truthfully, all we need to know about a company before we approach them is the people that work there and what what draws us to the industry or the company or their domain. It, you mentioned it earlier with the, the letters that we're writing. Who is the conversation about? And it's certainly not about us. And that's, you know, I talk continually about that paradox, Cleon, is that, you know, there's a paradox, right? To get a job, you need to make it not about a job. Right. Right. To, to build trust with somebody, it needs to be about not about you. Right. Exactly. <laughs> and, and so it's 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 paradoxical, but it does work. And so part of part of that is maybe a statement of faith to say this does work. I'm going to give it a shot. Maybe I take 30 days and all I do is talk to people and, and see what happens. I know a young man who is a college graduate, started with New York Life as a life insurance salesman while he was in college. He graduated and he went to work full time. And within about one or two years, he was way above all of his peer. He was doing very well. And I met him at that time in a, in a leads group. And he, uh, he just was a nice guy. So we talked and we continually stay in touch. He's still in the leads group. And um, a few years ago, he said to me, and he's not even 30 yet, but he said to me, he says, Cleon, you know what I found? And I says, what's that? He says, all I want to do is have conversations with people. I don't want to sell them anything. Oh, yes, sure. I'm, I need to sell. But my first introduction time or two is I just want to have a conversation with you. I want to learn about you. And I says, that's why you're ahead of the pack. Hmm. He's a student of people. Oh, and, and then he says, because what I've learned is that many of those people I talk to don't want my product or they've already got it. But he said, if they like me because I just got to know them and a friend pops up to them and says, hey, you know what? We just had another baby. We need to get some more insurance. Oh, I got a friend. He yeah. says, that's the best I can hope for. Yeah. But he says, and then as I get older, I will continue to grow people, 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 people. It's what it's all about. It's people. So when you're out interviewing, you're just getting to know them, some, not the company a little bit, them also. That's, that's the old joke. They used to teach sales. We would go in and you look for certain things. You look for a picture on the wall or a trophy. Oh, Andrew, where'd you, where'd you get that? Is that a golf <laughs> trophy? You know? Oh, you like yeah. golf. And you find something that you could have in common, possibly. Right. And Excellent. that's what you're doing. You're talking to people, learning about them. And then, oh, by the way, yes, uh, your company really interests me. I would love to have time to find out more about it. Well, yeah, about the company, about you, about your career right. path, about, you know, all those relational things that we're talking about. Good. So uh, Chelsea had another question here. Is it worth going back for my MBA as an addition to my 16 years professional experience? And, and I hear that a lot from from job seeking professionals, especially those out of work, thinking that um, potentially they're uh, they're doubting that their expertise is selling. So your thoughts there. So on that question, that's that's a wide spectrum to hit there. So first off is the financial end of it. And uh, a few years back, you probably remember there was a there was a big rash of um, grad students all over the United States complaining and make very vocal about if I knew that I would never be able to pay back the loan that I took out for this thing, I would have never done it. And I thought you had pencil and paper. You could have figured it out. You could have thought I'm going to spend 50,000 and I have 20 more years of work. That means I got to I must make an additional block a certain amount per year to pay it just to pay it back. So if you didn't figure that out, I feel bad for you that you didn't do that. But if you have the ability or many companies pay you for it, I mean, they'll pay for most of it. But yes, it's handy to have. But if you're going to do it for that reason, what I have seen, because I've watched people get laid off after 15 years of work, they give them a good severance package. I'm going to go get my MBA. They get it. They come back out in the market and they say, here I am. I have a fresh MBA. I'm ready to come to work and help run your company. And they say, well, you, where have you, what projects have you done in companies? Well, I haven't yet, but I did at school. Well, we need to have people who've actually done it in person for while they're making a salary. 
And so here they are with a brand new MBA, and they won't have to, you can hire in down at the bottom and come back up, work up. And they're frustrated now because they got to start making payments on the loan. And so I say, you have to figure all that out. But if you're going to do that and you say, this is going to take me to the next level, then when you interview with companies now, go out and do just mock interviews or, or informational interviews, definitely. And say, if I had my MBA, what what would you want me to focus on? Because there's an MBA, but then there's this MBA and this MBA and this MBA, and there's all kinds of masters. So therefore, you've got to know what you're getting. The school will sell you whatever you want. But if you don't know what you want nor need, now you're spending a lot of money. And it's great to have the education. And in, in 15 to 20 years, you'll really understand it better. But can you forego that? Uh, so you have to give, you have to do a lot of research, talk to friends, mm -hmm. talk to people who've gone the Abbey and there's different ways they've gone. Yes. There, there is wisdom in an abundance of counselors. Yes. Uh, so I would, I would absolutely validate, as you mentioned, Cleon with the marketplace that I'm trying to attract or impress is an MBA really required to do this work. And I, I think what we're seeing is a trend in the industry that, 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 that they're changing that moniker because education is not, uh, extrapolated or, or correlated to success on the job. Uh, and so you're seeing companies like Apple taking the lead there uh, and they're saying, Hey, you know, uh, combined education and experience or bachelor's not required, right? A lot of companies are changing their tune on that. Same with it. Same with universities. You know, you're seeing a lot of universities now saying, Hey, you know what? You don't need an SAT. You don't need an ACT. We have our own exam or we're going to take you in. And as long as you perform, you can stay. Right. Uh, so the, the, the times are changing and, and often, and I see it a lot, Cleon, where people are looking at, Hey, I'm not getting a job because I don't have the skill. I'm not getting a job because I don't have the education or the experience or all these different things that the talent acquisition folks are telling me, which is the tragedy because many of the talent acquisition folks are binary by trade, you either have it or you don't. And if you don't, you're not adequate, right? which is not true. That's just the way that they um, judge people as uh, valid candidates. Uh, and, and that's a, that's a black eye on the community, truthfully. Um, well, it's, it's, been, it's been said sometimes that you need to hire people for uh, what's the, what's the name they had? You have to hire people for who they are, what they can get done as opposed to how many degrees they have. Right. I remember. Yeah, you don't. What uh, did they say? You hire them for capacity, not um, not not skill, right? So you can teach people skill, but you can't teach them, you know, the intangibles. They have to be time. teachable. A good friend of mine, uh, he will talk to people, and on the first meeting, sometimes he and I'll reconnoiter afterwards, and he'll say, "Andrew's a great guy, but he's not teachable in his opinion <laughs> because he finds them fighting all the time. They're trying to tell you why they're great, and he's going like, okay." But he says when the person sits there and listens and then asks a couple of good questions, he's going, this person is teachable. And as a matter of fact, somebody that I sent him is now back east running a big portion of a college. Wow. Because he talked with him and the guy had some questions like, oh, you know, I don't know if I can do this or whatever. And within a short time, Dick had talked with him and he, he boosted him up. He says, oh, you can do this with ease. And bingo, he's back. I want to say Maryland, but I could be wrong. But he was out here for years. A great guy. So these are the things. Yes, the education is always wonderful. But it's to me, uh, the degrees are like a toolbox full of tools. And you can have, I can go out and buy the hammer. But if I don't really know how to really use the hammer or screwdriver, then it's no good. I've got to be able to put it to use. If you can yeah. utilize your degree. And uh, the people who have the roughest time I've ever seen, people who come through the support group with a PhD, they, they're at this point when they get to my group, because many times they won't come there, but when they do show up and you get to talking and they finally admit, well, I have a PhD, they start to get in touch with themselves. Okay, I'm just like them. We all eat, we sleep. And uh, the only difference, I have more degrees than them, but I ain't working either and nor are they. And therefore, when they get through that portion of it and then to figure out what are the skills that I have. And then the other big piece to me is what do you love to do? Yeah. 
Well, and part of that might be discovering that through education. And I think that's valid. So what we're really getting at here is exactly. determine what your motivation is for going to get the MBA. And is it for enrichment or development or um, to find yourself? Great. Is it to meet the expectations of the marketplace because you're not getting opportunities? Right. Right. Now, now, so we just need to evaluate, is that offering us something or, or are we trying to uh, mitigate a deficiency or a perceived deficiency that we have. So, so here's a long, longer, but it'll be a short tale. There's a young man that I'm mentoring in the Toastmasters Club I'm in, and he's from another country. And he's here, he's married, he's got three children. I think the oldest is nine. Uh, and then there's two younger ones. Uh, his wife has a PhD, works at Intel. He has a master's degree. He says, I think I'm going to have to go back and get my MBA. And then he, he always, he, he asked me a lot of personal questions, you know, like, well, what about this? Or what about that? And sometimes about the culture. So it's kind of interesting and fun. So we talk of Toastmasters, but then we go to that. The other morning he asked me, he says, my nine-year-old, he says, uh, I love her to death. She's so smart. She says, she just never seems to quit asking questions. I says, well, welcome to the parenthood. Well, anyway, he says, he says, can I ask you a question? I says, yes. He says, um, my daughter really seems to like art and she wants to be an artist. I said, yeah. He says, and so we tell her, well, that's nice, sweetie. He says, but what I've got to get across to her, and he's an IT guy. Mm -hmm. master's. He says, I've got to get across to her that I don't know that you could be an artist and be able to live on that when you're on your own. He says, so what can I tell her to get her to understand that? And I just stopped and I said, do you want my opinion? He goes, yes, please. I says, tell her nothing. She's not going to listen to you. Not now. I says, you need to listen and encourage her to do everything with the utmost. And then he said something else. And he says, but she, she needs to understand how important it is that she makes enough money. So I said, well, nine is too young. But I says, maybe you can share with her Maslow's theory of hierarchy. He says, uh, who's Maslow? <laughs> I said, you know, the psychologist. No. I said, you never took psychology in college? No, I'm an engineer. And I thought, I thought, oh, my goodness. Now, I thought anybody, especially he went to a four-year college and a grad school. And I was thought, well, I've learned something once again. Everybody doesn't get it. But I thought. Oh, my. I says, well, you look them up and just look for the hierarchy. And I asked, and I went through a little of it. I said, you know, basic needs. Yeah, okay, I got it. I said, just take a glance. You don't have to know it. But I said, somehow you can help instill that to her without all the textbook so that she realizes it's great to be an artist. Maybe you should do that on the side. Mm -hmm. But I said, some artists make millions. But as we know, so many artists, the money doesn't come till they're dead. Yeah, <laughs> go talk to the kid about that. So it's just kind of oh, wow. We're going down a dark path here. Yeah, <laughs> we're dark. On. Now yeah. we're talking about death. You, you've got to look the broader scope, and he's yeah. looking for those words. What words do I use to tell her so she'll accept what I say? And I'm thinking, well, good luck. Yeah, because the, well, the and, and you know, sometimes in in our you know with our support groups, Cleon, we run into that too, right? Yeah. Oh it yeah. Is uh, how do I get it across to a person? Uh -huh. How important it is to meet people. How important it is to have conversations with human beings. Um, and, and as you said earlier, you know, you put your little uh, mantra in there. I'd have to go back and find part of it. Have fun, meet people, learn something. Yeah, have fun, meet people, learn something. Right. I mean, if you just took that mantra into the marketplace, you would be so successful right. at, at getting to where you want to be faster. Well, I, I told you earlier about the guy that 10, 11 years ago, he came to the group and he was, he's mechanically, he understands, I have to make phone calls. I have to go out and visit. I have to interview. And he, he's doing this thing, but he's not doing it with the same passion. He probably does when he goes to the gym because he's been doing the gym for years. So here a year ago, he shows back up at the group when we were still meeting. And I said, Oh, how are you doing? He goes, I'm doing fine. He's I'm out of work again. So he's 10 years older. And he starts in, he's going like, yeah, I'm having a hard time. I just don't understand it. He goes, the last place I worked, he says, it seems like as I'm walking through, 
uh, my fellow workers, uh, something comes up and they go like, well, how old are you? He goes, I don't understand why everybody wants to know my age. So he's got this thing going, like they're looking to get me or something. And so he asked me again, he says, so what do you think, what do you think I should do to, to get myself? He says, because I just got to get a job till I retire another five years. And so we talked and I said, what do you think? He said, you're probably going to talk about that damn Toastmaster thing again. <laughs> okay, I won't talk about it. Says, you already told me you know about it. I've, I've offered it to you. And then I told him, I says, I didn't tell you this 10 years ago because you wound up getting a job. But I said, you're not in touch with yourself. Well, how is that going to do it? I said, I don't know how it works. It's all in psychology of what you learn about you and how you can take yourself up and be more confident sounding. You're able to articulate better what you want. I said, that's all I could tell you. And then he came back the following week. We chatted some more. And all of a sudden, it hit me. And I said, you know, you keep talking about all I want is a job until I'm 65, till I can retire. I says. So tell me something, you retire, we'll say on your birthday at 65, 66, I don't care what. I says, you retire, what are you gonna do? Well, you know, I, I don't know, I just wanna get there. I says, uh-uh, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna die the next day? Well, no. I says, then what are you gonna do? And he looks at me, well, I don't understand where you're going. I said, okay, <laughs> that's fine. And he, Following week, he comes back. He goes, "You've really got me thinking." It's my God. What am I going to do if when I'm not working? I said, "Yeah, you're going to stay at the gym all day." Well, no. I said, "What are you going to do? You're going to volunteer. You're going to work part time." I says, "That's not uncommon. Person takes a year off, do a little traveling, visit some family, and then all of a sudden, like, okay, I'm bored. And we'll just say you've got enough money to live on nicely, not lavishly, but nicely." But I said, pretty soon they go back to work for less money than they were making. I said, so you have to decide on those things. So this is a part of your process. I want to go back to work. Quit saying till I retire. When you're ready to retire, you will do it. But that was an eye opener again for me. Well, it was leverage, right? It gave, it opened his mind. Well, so I think that's what, that's what we're trying to do here uh, every Friday, right? With our, right. with our support groups and such. And, uh, it, you know, it wasn't until I, I decided that um, there, there was something potentially better than what I had. Uh, I was selling real estate. I really loved selling real estate. I thought I would do it till I retired. Right. <laughs> there I go again, retired. I, I thought I'd do it in retirement because it's something you can do for a long time. A lot of people do. Right? Uh, and it wasn't until I, I imagined that there could be something better, that I actually found something better. So, that, and then as you lean into that, you know, it's natural that you're going to share with people why you're doing what you're doing because you enjoy it so much uh, and you never want to put it down. You never want to stop doing it. Well, so it turns out you're a people person, but when you went through college, you may not have ever learned that. Somebody may not have ever told you that. And, and there's a good chance that you were partially shy. And so you went into, I think your field at the time was engineering mm -hmm. and you went into that and I can do this. I've learned, I've learned all this stuff. And you went to work and you were doing this. And then unfortunately, or actually fortunately, opportunistically, somebody says, oh, things aren't too good. We got to lay you off. I think that's what happened. You yeah. got laid off. And then pretty yeah. soon something happened and you go like, well, these guys, they do pretty good. And they kind of get to set their own schedule. All that stuff sounds cool. Make decent money. And then as you got into real estate, you at that point, my guess is, because I've seen this, you mm -hmm. began to see, I like people. They're kind of cool. I don't have to be out just figuring out how to build or whatever it was you did, sitting yeah. in an office or whatever. Oh, wow, this is, and you, it just worked out and you were doing well and you worked hard. You worked as hard or harder than when you first started college and then when mm -hmm. you first started your first job, you got into it and pounded out. Yeah. Something led you to begin doing the group uh, because the same thing that happened with Ed Burpee, that's how he started the support group just prior to me coming. And then I've taken it over. But so he found he liked people and you did too. And then after a while, you had another come up. It's like, well, I enjoy real estate. It's really cool. I could do it in my retirement. But I like this of helping these people. It's kind of cool. I can actually see more results. I mean, I can see results in dollars from selling. Mm -hmm. But, you know, somebody wants, well, I know, you know who Jan Foster is. Mm -hmm. Remember her? Mm -hmm. Beers Group. 
Well, I remember one day she says, can we have coffee? And we did. And she says, after years of going in and out of jobs, she goes, you know what I found out, Cleon? I says, tell me. She says, there's more to life than money. And I said, oh, well, good for you. I says, it doesn't do me any good to tell that to people because um, they're like me. They got bills to pay. Yeah. But that's that's the whole truth of it. So you find what you like. And sometimes it doesn't always show up. But always be looking in today's market, today's people, you're working, you have a great company, you have a great position, a career, but you have to keep your eyes open all the time now. You have to be scanning, listening. That's why you go to events, you go, you go to seminars, you go to places to listen to people, and then you hear about something new, uh, all these type of things. Uh, I remember when the web first came out and everywhere, that was the, well, prior to that, it was the fax machine. Mm -hmm. And then we went to the web and then it was the big thing. Now the web, it's a whole other way of life. Yeah. And now we have zoom. I mean, can you, I always it's laugh amazing. about, can you imagine those people, they found this product, they made it up and they began putting it out. And their big problem in life was how can we get enough people to use it? And then one day COVID showed up. Yeah. <laughs> and we are where we are today. Yes, sir. Well, thank you for joining us, Cleon. Uh, I think we're going to sign off here. I do appreciate you. I encourage everybody in the chat uh, or anybody that maybe views the replay of this uh, to connect with Cleon. Are you are you open to that? Oh, definitely. Okay. Definitely. And you're doing, are you still doing informational meetings over the phone or on Zoom? I will. Sure. If people want okay. to, that's fine. I can do them with Zoom. Um, I haven't, I've used the, this is Google, I think, isn't it? No, it's a restream. Oh, it's a um, so LinkedIn. Um, Oh no! It's yeah, not. no. This is a, a live broadcast okay. tool. So it brought you're broadcasting literally, Cleon. You're broadcasting right now on LinkedIn, YouTube, Periscope, and Facebook at the same time. Okay. So one question for you is: uh -huh. What camera do you have? I got a, a Logitech C920. C920. Okay. Yeah, uh, they're like unicorns right now. When COVID hit and everybody went work from home, the the inventory went to zero overnight. Yeah, I always thought mine was clear, but when I look at yours, it's although I'm old anyway, and not much that can do for me. Yeah. <laughs> well, the light, the lighting helps. So I right. mean, I've got, I've got uh, two windows in my office right above the, uh, and they're uh, they're higher, right? They're okay. not like right in my face. Yeah. So um, the lighting is really okay. good in this space. So I guess. I, yeah. <laughs> you're right. Okay. <laughs> well, you want to face the window. You don't want it to the side because then you have. Right. Anyway. Oh, that was a, a light in the room. Yeah. All right, Cleon. Thanks so much, sir. Have Thank a good you. weekend. Thank you all. Yep. Good Take care. All right, everybody. Thanks for joining today. I do appreciate it. Uh, if you have any questions, leave those in the chat. Happy to answer. Uh, you might use the hashtag a career happy hour so that we can identify those questions and respond to them. Thank you again. We'll see you next Friday, 3 p.m. Pacific time right here on career happy hour. Take care, everybody. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.